We're living in a world that is more connected than ever before. Yet despite being so connected, mobile technology may be leading some towards becoming antisocial. Join us in our discussion on mobile technology and screen time. Islam kuch bhi ho Jayenge hum jahan bhi ke Jana pade hume Jayenge hum jahan bhi ke Jana pade hume Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Beacon of Truth, a live program in which we discuss a variety of contemporary issues relevant to today's young Muslims. To help analyze these subjects, we get the views and expertise of some guests, as well as the general public. You too can get in touch with us with your comments and your questions. You can send us your comments and questions via Twitter or Instagram using hashtag BeaconMTA. We are also conducting today an online poll about today's subject, so be sure to take part in that as well. Today, I am joined by my two colleagues, Farhan Iqbal Sahib and Rizwan Muhammad Sahib, both of whom are serving as Imams and missionaries of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community here in Canada. Today, we're discussing a topic on mobile technology. We are living in an age where technology has brought the world more closer together than ever before. In fact, more than 3 billion people are connected to the internet across the world. And every coming day, we are seeing greater and greater strides in the field of mobile technology. But despite all of these advancements and improvements and efficiencies that it has brought into our lives, we are also seeing the dark sides of these technologies. A great number of the population with sleep deprivation, with psychological and physiological drawbacks from the use or perhaps we should say the overuse of these technologies. Now, before we begin our discussion, let's get a word on the street and see what the public is saying on this topic. I appreciate the fact that I can now share information more easily. Uh, there's a Moodle tool, which is like a, a web-based web uh, uh, tool whereby I can post uh, readings and the students can access them. And, at an affordable price, and that's great. For me, I think it's a tool, especially because in, in educational studies, you have to connect with your peers because you're doing a lot of group work, less than just like um, writing essays, doing tests. You're doing a lot of group discussions, a lot of uh, literature circles, so you need to connect with your classmates. You can get like ebooks online and read uh, your textbooks there instead of like just carrying around like big heavy books. And you can also like connect with all your peers or like your teachers. Uh, well, I like use a laptop to take notes. Um, so it's like a lot easier for me to take notes on a laptop than it is to handwrite them because I can get information down faster. Definitely things in the past that would take a long time take up, much less now. As an example, like Google Docs has been so important. Like before, uh, like when you had to submit assignments to the professor, that like you had to uh, like do, go to the lab, manually print it out, and then give the papers to the professor. But now, like you can do anything, everything from your home. It makes it a lot easier, so it's fast too. So if you have a question that like you want it uh, quick, you could just go on the internet, browse around, and with phones, you already have internet on your uh, plan. Majority of us do, so it makes it easier, easy access with any type of uh, situations that you're in. So most people, in fact, all the people uh, who gave in their comments, it seems they had nothing negative to say. And in fact, uh, it's helping people. Everyone is be benefiting from this technology. Uh, it's helping in the day-to-day -day lives. Even we know that in the remotest parts of the world, uh, where people may not have the amenities and luxuries of life, yet they will still have access to mobile technology. So Farhan Saab, could you shed some light on mobile technology, how it has helped people living even in the uh, remotest areas of the world? I think most of us can relate to uh, what uh, comments people were giving about, uh, you know, these mobile phones having uh, e-books and so much access to information. Uh, and as you have mentioned, when it comes to remote parts of the world also, there, there's so much that they have benefited from mobile technology. 
Uh, I myself have uh, spent some time in Ghana and uh, in very remote places. Uh, I spent some time in a village where there was no running water, there was no electricity, but people still had their mobile phones. And it was very uh, interesting and adventurous for us uh, that uh, they, would, they would have these generators and these uh, places where people would go and they would drop their phone off and it would get recharged and then they'll pick up a few hours later or the next day. So you can see how much mobile phones have, how far they have reached to such remote places and how there's that, of course there's that communication that those people are now connected, but also there's the educational side of things. There's the educational aspect so many good things th these people can learn uh, from their, just their phones. You know, I remember in, back in Jamia also, we used to uh, talk about this, how just a couple of hundred years ago, uh, people used to travel long distances, even just to see Sahih Bukhari, right. the, the book of Ahadith, just to see that they would have to travel long distances just to get to a library or something and, and, and get their hands on this book. But now we can just easily, on these laptops, we just open them up, a few clicks away, we, we can read Sahih Bukhari. Or in our phones, we can just pull out our phones and a few taps away, we have Sahih Bukhari. So, so much access to good information is out there uh, that is helping people. Then there's also the entertainment side of things. People use these devices to watch movies or go to YouTube or watch other kinds of videos. There's the aspect of, uh, you know, having access to dictionaries, to books, to e-books, having access to maps. You know, if you, even nowadays we go to a country where we may not know any of their road systems, but we can just, through our phones, navigate and, and have no problem getting to places. Then there's the side of, you know, even like uh, YouTube has these how-to videos. Right. Uh, with our Khuddam the other day, we were having this uh, discussion on how to change your doorbell. Right? And you could just go, go to YouTube and it's like a minute long video where it tells you how to, uh, how to change your do doorbell. So skills, we can learn practical skills just go going online and searching for the right video. So, so many benefits are there from, from these devices. Literally anything and the, few, and the world is at our fingertips. Anything you want to learn, anything you want to enjoy, everything is there. So these are, and, and the educational aspect obviously as you mentioned. Now, uh, Rizwan Saab, Besides the educational benefits, there is the great advantage of this mobile technology, which is communication. So could you shed some more light on the communication aspect of the, how that's helping the people in the world? Well, definitely with the advancement of technology, we find that we're able to speak to people across the globe instantly, either through uh, video messaging or right. just messaging through WhatsApp or uh, Skype or any other apps that we find. So it's made it quite easy to communicate with people uh, across the world. Also, uh, there's an example of that I can share where, uh, you know, usually after we graduate from Jamia, we are sent to Africa, we're sent to Pakistan, we're sent to South America in order to get some training, right. some field experience. So one of the graduates of Jamia Ahmed Kanda, he was sent to Ghana. So while he was in Ghana, he actually, his wife had a child. So when he met Hazur Anwar for a mulaqat afterwards, he told Hazur Anwar that while I was in Ghana, uh, my wife had a child. So Hazur Anwar, he mentioned his own experience and he said that at least you were able to see him and at least you were able to see his pictures and you were able to uh, find out right away that your wife had a child. And he mentioned his own experience uh, and he said that he found out through Al-Fazl a month later that uh, you know, he was blessed with a daughter. So this shows that just uh, through communications and the advancements in communication, how things have been uh, beneficial for us. And also in terms of emergency, for example, cases, we find that we can, if we're in an uh, emergency, we can tell people, we can let people know right away, we can call 911. So these kind of benefits are always there and those, uh, they're helping us in our da da daily lives. So in, as far as communication goes, in times of happiness, in times of sorrow, uh, very quickly and across the continents, across the globe, we can get in contact with each other and disseminate that information as quickly as possible. So these exactly. are some of the amazing benefits of the world that we are living in in this day and age. I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the program that we, uh, Beacon of Truth is a live program and you can comment and you can send us your questions via Twitter as well as uh, Instagram using the hashtag uh, BeaconMTA. So we will take some of those social media questions, uh, sorry, the, the questions will come later, the comments that have been coming in. 
Uh, this one comment comes in from um, F. Farooq Saiba on Twitter. She comments that uh, this is going to be interesting. A lot of my time in the day is spent in front of screens, taking notes, uh, doing Jamaat work. And she says she's curious as to how uh, the team will approach this topic. Jazakallah for your comment. Uh, Anas Ahmed Sahib, he mentions that I'm glad, to, uh, I'm glad you guys are discussing this topic, explaining the pros and the cons of technology these days. This is what we're here for, to address the various issues that are relevant to today's young Muslims. Mahi Jamal Ahmed Saiba, she comments that we should try to give healthy options like reading and writing, art, and other constructive things. Inshallah, uh, tune in for the rest of the program and we will go into detail uh, about some of the things that uh, sh should be expected um, living in this society, which is apart from the social media or the uh, mobile technology aspect. And Tahira Chaudhary Saiba, she mentions that if mothers and fathers make themselves available to their children and share their leisure times together, it will certainly play a very positive role in disengaging kids from the screens. And uh, we are with you in this comment, absolutely. And our objective is also to keep uh, these screens out of the hands of some of the, the very small youngsters because of all of the, the adverse effects that it does have on them, on their developing brains, inshallah. We will discuss this in great detail, inshallah. And one last comment from Ahmadiyya 101 uh, says that socialize in real life as opposed to online social networking. And that is the true uh, social interaction that Islam teaches. We will definitely be discussing these aspects. Now, having been immersed in this technology for over a decade now, we are just now beginning to see on a global front how it's affecting lives of humanity at large. The harmful side effects, they're gradually being realized and several are now actually becoming clinically diagnosed. So let's take a look and listen. I know some of my clients who lost their jobs because of spending a lot of time on their Facebook, on the telephone, on these screens. This is becoming a huge issue. Again, the medical cause for these issue, why they get attracted to these kinds of activities, that the medical cause is either their physical illness, they don't they get tired, they don't address these issues. Second thing is that they are depressed, they are anxious. And when they are, all they do is that they're spending time, so their physical activity reduces, which results in obesity and chronic fatigue. So they begin experiencing um, diabetic symptoms, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and finally, eventually, heart disease. Uh, welcome to Beacon of Truth. Even though we've discussed so many of the uh, benefits, the advantages of this technology, uh, but Farhan Saab, we just, as uh, Dr. Saab has mentioned, there's a lot of uh, side effects. There's a dark side to this mobile technology. So could you tell us some more of the, the negative impacts of the mobile technology on uh, the social interactions that our people are having? Yeah, so as Dr. Saab was talking about, uh, there are health impacts, there are physical health impacts, there are mental health issues that are associated with phone uh, usage. Uh, there's a lot of stress and anxiety that develops because our phones are, are meant to grab attention. They're always having these notifications and messages that the phone wants us to respond to. So obviously it increases the stress and anxiety levels of those who are using it. There's even something that is now called nomophobia nomophobia, it's, it's a new term that has recently been going around. It's basically short for no mobile phone phobia. So if you don't have your phone around you or you misplaced it or you lost it, you have that anxiety, that fear sort of, that phobia, that where's my phone, I need to, I need to find it, where, where is it? So that kind of anxiety that is associated with that. In fact, according to Psychology Today, research shows that 58% of men and 47% of women have this phobia. So a lot of people have this phobia, and an additional 9% would feel anxious if their phone is turned off. So phones have become a really integral part of our lives. They, they're always there, and of course, they're contributing to the stress and anxiety levels. 
Then another aspect of this is the relationships. I mean, people, couple relationships or sibling relationships or parent-child relationships are impacted because of phones. Uh, because phones are preventing us from having direct in-person contact, so that is reducing uh, that kind of happiness that we get from our social in-person communication and contact. When that is reduced, there's, uh, of course, an impact on, uh, on the happiness level. Then there's the social aspect of these things, that w children especially are becoming antisocial because they're spending so much time on their phones. Their, their communication skills are being reduced. Uh, in fact, a child psychologist, uh, Melissa Ortega, uh, talks about this, that children don't know how to face conflict nowadays, for instance. They're not able to handle conflict because they don't have that much in-person contact and they're spending so much time uh, on, uh, or on or with uh, technology. Then another aspect of these things is the over-reliance on technology, especially for GPS, for instance, there are reports of people driving in the wrong direction for hours because they're so focused on uh, that GPS where it's taking them, or they take the wrong turn into a park or into a building or almost off a cliff, off, 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 uh, off the edge of a cliff. Uh, so these kind of things are are, are, are there that are that are result are result of over reliance of uh, on, on 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 the phone or on GPS. I mean, how, how many of us? Uh, actually remember phone numbers anymore, right? right. It's, it's a result of that reliance. And finally, there's that spiritual side of things as well. Um, if you're on our devices, on our phones late into the night, we don't get up for, on time for Fajr prayer. It's an impact uh, of, of the same screen time. The Holy Quran, in the Holy Quran, Allah says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, Hu Anfusakum Wa Ahlikum Nara, which is chapter 66, verse 7, O ye who believe, save yourselves and your family from the fire. So the fire can be a lot of things. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, for instance, says, desires of this world create a form of impure greed, which in turn increases yearning and, and thirst for more. And this is in Malfuzat, volume 1. So it's, it's that desire and it's that constant greed and, uh, for, for either attention or connection or what, what not, which causes us to indulge in, 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 our, in our technology, in our, in our mobile phones, which can become sort of like a fire, right? And, and it takes us away from uh, our other responsibilities and our spiritual health and our mental health and all these things are impacted because of our mobile phone usage. So the overusage of it has implications across the board on all of these different social interactions, the children you mentioned, the parents and everything. So Rizwan Saab, that's the social interactions, but uh, we're starting to find now that uh, the use or the overuse of these technologies is also bringing us some physiological changes in the body and actually causing uh, some great harm. So could you shed some more light on that? So we find that uh, there's a new Canadian study which just came out and it backs up what Farhan Saab just mentioned, that too much screen time uh, is getting in the way of social interactions, right. especially amongst young children. And this is the age where they need to develop their skills, especially their communication skills, their motor skills. And because of being on the phone, they do not uh, develop those skills. So there is one uh, in the same uh, study, it mentions that one in four Canadian children are not developmentally ready for school by the time they start kindergarten. And a new study suggests excessive screen time may be a key contributor. So it shows that you know, due to not having those face-to-face -face interactions, they, it, it, it's causing basically, it, it's detrimental to their growth and they're not having those uh, interactions and they cannot develop those social skills right. that they need uh, later on. And that's due to the fact that most of their time is spent on the screen instead of the time which should have been spent uh, with you know, other children or with their parents and in that interaction and getting those social interactions. So this could lead to also speech impairments, for example. Right. Uh, they won't be able to speak properly when they reach kindergarten or, or when they're going to school because of the lack of communication that they have. Also, for example, sleep apnea is a big issue. We're all guilty of it where we go to bed and the lights are turned off and we're on our phones, right. which is basically the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're trying to sleep, but we're on our phones and that does not allow us to relax. We're trying to get to the last notification. Exactly. We're trying to go through everything and see what have we missed the entire day. So these are the type of things and studies have found that sleep disorders, especially, they're linked to depression. Right. So certain things can cause depression, especially lack of sleep. And then we have uh, something like uh, 
we find that nowadays in children, we have neck problems and uh, shoulder problems and uh, spinal issues. And there's an article on the CBC website which, which states that some patients, particularly young patients, who shouldn't yet have back and, neck, back, uh, back and neck issues, are reporting disc hernias and alignment problems. So we can see that at such a young age, where they shouldn't even be thinking about uh, back problems and neck issues, and it should be something which should be maybe further on when they're older, they're having these issues nowadays. Yeah. And it's actually called text neck, where text they're- Text neck. Yes where they're spending their entire time looking down, they're on their phones, they're texting, and because of that, the neck is being curved uh, to such an extent that it's actually causing them uh, physiological problems. And I would assume um, the obesity factor is also there, the weight gain. If they're spending all that time, then very much physical activity is there. Exactly. This was there even in the times where it was just the television, which was the screen, uh, but now it's the screens have erupted and, and the activity is probably decreased even more so. Because uh, you know, kids are spending too much time on uh, video games, they're playing PlayStation, Xbox, right. and it's become like hours and hours and they're not getting out of that. And because of that, they don't have enough physical activity. Jazakallah, gentlemen. Now that we have spoken about the advantages and also this very long list of disadvantages of these technologies, it seems that we should be finding ways to reduce our screen time or at least have more control over our screen time. So we will discuss a little bit about the practical ways to reduce that screen, uh, the screen time. But before getting into that, let's watch what the public is saying on this. To monitor my technology usage, and I think social media usage as well, is I turn off my notifications for my email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What I do, I usually put on Do Not Disturb, which helps out a lot because no one can call you, no one could like message you or people will message you, it's just you won't get it until you open up your phone. So it's but I mean, I just turn it off and the distraction goes away. So I started limiting my time, like, like let's say one hour each day to social media. Like uh, any everything uh, in, in consistency and uh, like if you limit something, it's good for you. But uh, like addiction of anything is bad. Yeah, sometimes when I'm like trying to do my homework, I set up like timers. So uh, if I'm like reading something, I set up like a timer for like 30 minutes. So I read for like 30 minutes. And then after that, I take like a little break and I can like go on my phone and stuff. And um, I think it really helps. So it seems that most people, uh, they know about the addictive properties and it's an addiction is what it is. It's a tool, it's supposed to be used as a tool, but it's uh, being catered more as an addiction now. And uh, these students mostly who, who were interviewed, they seem to realize this and they're already uh, trying to find ways to curb that usage. So what are some other ways, uh, uh, Rizwan Saab, that we can curb this usage? You know, uh, parents, they play a key role in uh, you know, uh, seeing how much time their children are spending on the screens. Uh, and this is exactly what Hazur Anwar, Haital Mr. Aziz, he has mentioned that parents, they need to spend more quality time with their children. So instead of, you know, we find in the same house, uh, people are on their phones, they're not even interacting with each other. And this is all because we have those screens in front of us and we're not having those face-to-face -face interactions which we need. So this is something that parents should understand and especially they can turn off the Wi-Fi in certain uh, times of the day, maybe at night or while they're eating. Right. They can turn it off or they can tell them to leave their phones in the rooms. So certain things like that they can easily do. And we have to understand that a child, it, he always mimics whatever the parents do. Right. Right. So if the parents are on their phone all day and they're texting and they're, doing, they're calling on their phone, the child is going to do the exact same thing. If they're watching TV too, too long, the child will also uh, you know, be intrigued and it, and it also wants to you know, pick up on that and do the same thing. So we have to be role models for our, for our children as well. And we have to understand that uh, we have to cut down on our own uh, screen time and then our children can follow. Also, we find that um, you know, instead of actually reading a, a, on a tablet or on our phones or laptops, we can pick up an actual book, a physical hard copy of the book, and we can read. Uh, instead of playing games uh, online, we can go outside and play, you know, have some physical activity as well. And for example, instead of uh, messaging, we can pick up the phone and just call the person. A lot of times we find that uh, we have to get in touch with someone and we message them. And if they don't respond, we're like, he's not responding. Where is he? We don't know where he is. But all we have to do is just pick up the phone and just talk to him. And many times that's actually within the same household. 
uh, you know, you're calling someone, instead of actually going and maybe taking a little bit of a walk or going up the stairs to talk to them, uh, they tend to text message and, and leave it at that. And yeah. this obviously is going to add uh, with all those adverse effects. Also, uh, if, I'm, if I may add, uh, many times we find that, you know, uh, parents to have young children. So when they have young children, they're crying, uh, you know, it's hard to take care of them. So we find that uh, many times the parents, they just hand them a tablet or a phone and to make them, you know, stay quiet. So this is basically taking the easy way out, but they don't understand that it's actually detrimental to their future learning, their future skills. So we have to take care of this as well. Jazakallah, Rizwan Saab. So uh, Farhan Saab and those students uh, that were interviewed, they also mentioned many of these things as well. Um, how they can, they're actually using the technology itself, maybe using uh, parts of the apps themselves uh, to cut down the screen time. So you could elaborate a little bit more on that. Actually, the fact is that awareness is increasing. Uh, even big in investors and in phone companies have talked about these kind of things should be there to control our phone usage or our screen time. Even the co-creator of the iPhone, Mr. Tony Fadell, if I said his name correctly, uh, talked about these issues a, uh, just a year ago. In January 2018, uh, he talked about this and he suggested that both Apple and Google uh, should have tracking uh, that tells people about their usage. So he talked about this and interestingly, over the course of the year 2018, um, both Apple and Google have worked on this, and in the latest uh, update for Apple, they have introduced a screen time feature in the phone, which allows us to track how much time we have sent, spent on our phones right. uh, during the last day or during the last week, and it even monitors over the course of time every week whether our, increase, uh, whether our usage has increased or decreased. Our screen time basically has increased or decreased. And then with Google, they have introduced uh, in YouTube uh, a feature called Time Watched, which tells you how much time you've spent watching videos uh, on YouTube. Then there are social media companies uh, like Instagram that have introduced different uh, monitoring um, uh, features that tell us how much time you've spent on those, on, on social media, for instance. So companies are becoming aware of this and they're introducing features that can help improve this. Then for parents, uh, we talked about parents and children. Uh, parents can monitor their children's usage as well through different kinds of apps. Um, so technology itself allows them that option. Um, there are different kinds of apps out there. They can go online and search for the best app for them and, and, and monitor their usage. I mean, again, uh, we, we should be careful that parents should be role models. It's not that they are themselves using the phone all the time, but they're making sure their children aren't. The children need that time, face-to-face uh, -face time as well. So if we are taking technology away from, from them, we should at the same time provide them with alternatives and spend more time with them physically in-person in contact as well. You know, even Silicon Valley superstars, uh, Apple's former uh, CEO, Steve Jobs, Microsoft's uh, co-founder, Bill Gates, uh, tech billionaire, Mark Cuban, Reddit co-founder, Alexis Ohanian. If you look for what, how they treat their children when, when it comes to technology and how they manage that, they're saying they have, they're having the same concerns. I mean, Bill Gates, for instance, uh, has even said that he, he banned cell phones for his children until the age of 14. Right, and then uh, he, he even forbids them, those who have cell phones, he forbids them from bringing the phone to the dinner table. As Rizwansa was also mentioning, you know, having that time away from, from the screen, having that time away from our phones uh, to, 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 to curb our usage. Then there's something that developers use which is called grayscale. There's a setting in our phones which allow us to turn it into grayscale so that the phone doesn't look that attractive. Right now, phones are designed to be attention grabbing, as I said earlier. There are different colors, and the green, the red, and different colors that are meant to attract attention. We can change that by turning our phones into grayscale. You know, one, one little exercise we can do is that when we're coming to the mosque for prayer, not bringing our phones with us to the mosque, you know, that would be that our, our time away from the screen, right. away from our phones and technology, just going there for prayer, that itself could be a great way uh, to, 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 to get that time away from our screens and just going to the mosque and fo focusing on the prayer. And even with the interaction uh, with the children, if I could just pick up on that, there's something different between uh, active versus passive screen time. So passive would be when they're, you know, just playing games and they're not, you know, learning anything or interacting. But active would be where the parents themselves are fully engaged with them, whether they're learning something on the screen, but they're actively taking part and learning together. 
Uh, I mentioned in the beginning that uh, uh, there was a, there will be uh, the viewers can get involved by taking an online poll. So I have the results of that poll with me now. Uh, the question that was asked, there was two questions. The first was that what is your daily average screen time? And the results of the, the poll are as follows. 19% uh, are, their average daily screen time is one to two hours. 32% uh, are saying that it is two to four hours for those who took part in this poll. 29% are saying four to six hours. And 20% are saying that their daily average screen time is more than six hours. That's quite staggering. Right. That's a quarter of your whole day that is spent in front of the screen. Now, obviously, that may be some time well spent, efficient time, but much of that time may be extra time, uh, which is, can lead to these adverse effects, as we mentioned. Uh, the second question in our poll is that what is the most effective way uh, to reduce screen time? And 8% said to set a timer. 5% said that they sh we should ban devices in certain rooms of the house. 15% saying ban devices at certain times of the day. And a seven, staggering 72% are saying to take up another hobby. So it seems the public and everyone does seem to know uh, what is good for them and what they should be doing. Uh, we have discussed some of the pros and the cons of mobile technology and screen time. We've also discussed how it's impacting people physically, emotionally. And now we will discuss another aspect of this technology. And for that, we should understand truly how lucky we are to be living in this age of technology. Because the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he prophesied that the final victory of Islam will happen in the latter days, as well as the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, peace be upon him, he was given this prophecy and this, it gave this glad tidings that I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. And modern technology is playing a vital role in the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Jamaat members are using this to spread the message of Islam and, and to connect with the Khalifa of the time as well. Let's take a look and listen. Whenever I'm doing Jamaat work and I have emails that are on the go, um, you know, I can respond to it in a timely manner. I can do, um, you know, a lot of phone calls that I do to my, you know, my team members. It's definitely better because it saves a lot of time. And in that time, you can achieve a lot more than if you would be sitting and, and doing it uh, manually. Before even MTA, there was only like we received the pictures of Hazur and we used to listen the Friday sermon through audio cassettes. But right now, because the MTA is there and the social media is there, every day, like uh, whatever is happening, so we can see Hazur. So I do take the go bus or go train sometimes. And when I do meet uh, some of my Qadam on Friday, we share a device to watch MTA, for example, Hazur's Qutba, especially for the 8 a.m. when I have class at 8 or 9. So Jamaat work-wise, I do report submissions uh, for Jamaat level and for Qadam level. So there are obviously, uh, I mainly do it on my uh, handheld device. Especially in the, in the line of work that I do for Jamaat, which is media and press, um, timeliness is, is uh, you know, time is of the essence. So um, it really helps me in being able to quickly respond to, to emails and phone calls. I think since the inception of social media, Jamaat as a whole globally has become more connected. Because, you know, since the, since the advent of social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, Jamaat is more connected, specifically the youth, because they're able to, you know, go on their smartphones and see what's happening in a village in Africa. Or I'm able to see a, a sports term, tournament that's happening in Belize. So these screens and these mobile technologies, essentially they're a tool. And this technology is a tool and it serves a purpose. So for Hansab, what can we say, what is the true purpose of technology? You know, it's interesting, uh, the poll results uh, where a lot of people saying ban the technology in certain rooms. I mean, uh, I agree partially with that. Uh, just that, uh, you know, we have to understand that technology does serve certain good purposes. Right. And uh, we're not, uh, we shouldn't take like rash measures or extreme measures and, and, and say, okay, stop doing this or throw this out. That's not the point. Uh, the point is that technology does serve a purpose. The Quran uh, talks about this. The Quran says, well, he's nufusu zuvijat. The Quran predicted uh, in chapter 81, verse 8, when people are brought together, right? In nowadays, we have seen people are being brought together through so many other ways, but technology is also bringing us together. Social media has brought us together. People all across the world can hear each other, talk to each other, 
through uh, social media in ways that was not possible even through letters and in, in the past, in the recent past. So it is serving a purpose, and uh, the promised Messiah al -Islam, uh, had this revelation that you've already quoted, I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth, and technology has uh, that ability, uh, that, that benefit of taking this message all across the world, propagating the message properly. So we can easily, you know, uh, quote from the Quran, quote from Ahadith, sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sayings of the Promised Messiah alaihi salam, sayings of Khulafa. Very easily we can uh, transmit or send this, these uh, quotations and share them across the globe very easily and, and take this message out. And then there's the aspect of the khutbat of Huzur, MTA Live, uh, watching MTA Live. Uh, you know, uh, some time back I was having this conversation with a khadim and he was saying that here in Canada, the khutbah comes live at 8 a.m. A lot of people are going to work at that time. Right. So I suggested to, to him that he can easily use his phone to listen to the live uh, khutbah and connect that phone to his car through Bluetooth and he, he can just get that audio feed and, and listen to the khutbah live. And it's so helpful and he was appreciating it so much. He was so excited that, it, it, you know, I finally helped him solve this. So technology has that purpose. Technology has that benefit to it and we cannot overlook that fact. Right. I mean, uh, when we think about it in, 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 in overall, you know, technology itself is not good or bad. Right? Uh, techno the use of technology is what determines whether it's a good use or a, or, a, or a bad use. If you're using it for tabligh, if you're using it for to be productive, then it, is, it has some good purposes. And, but if you're, if you're using it for, for wasting our time, then it is a bad uh, purpose. The Promised Messiah had another revelation where Allah sa said to him, Anta shaykhul masihul lazi la yuda'u waqtuhu. That is, you are the revered Messiah whose time shall not be wasted. And by Messiah, it, it applies to us as well. We are part of, we are the followers of the Messiah, and our time should all, also not be wasted uh, on whatever we are doing with these devices. And, and we notice that, obviously, uh, as far as the efficiency, it, li life is easier. It, technology makes life easier if it is used correctly and if we're using it uh, at a moderate pace, moderately using it. So, uh, Rizwan Sa, what are some of the positive ways we can say we can use this technology? Could you tell us, like, what should we be doing? What can some of the things that we can do? So, for example, uh, Farhan Sa mentioned that there are some apps, uh, and there's an MTA app. Right. We can listen to the live um, procession of MTA right there and then. Um, we can listen to the sermon, the Friday sermon of Azur Anwar, Ayat al Masil Aziz alive as well. And we find that many times on WhatsApp, we, we share different quotations, uh, a hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, so all these benefits are there. Even uh, different countries we have that uh, we can pay the chanda online as well and even get the receipt uh, in our emails. So even that is there, that's a, that's a huge benefit in, uh, nowadays that we see. There's some apps called uh, Ask Islam. Right. There is a Khalifa of Islam app, Al Hakam app. Uh, even Al Fazl, the newspaper, we can read that online on our screens. Uh, even Muhammad's fact check, uh, fact check is also there. It's an app where it, uh, you know, clears the allegations raised against the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we can see that all these apps are there. Uh, it's uh, it's the way we use them. Is if we use them in a, in a positive way, if we try to gain uh, knowledge from them, uh, benefit from them, then of course it's it's something which will help us in our tarbiyat as well. Jazakallah, gentlemen, uh, for this discussion on technology, on, on apps, on the screen time, on the mobile technology. I mentioned earlier that uh, you can tune in and you can comment, you can quest uh, send your questions in via Twitter and Instagram using hashtag BeaconMTA. So we have a few questions that have been coming in uh, from, from these different sources. A question comes from Kamar Ahmed Sahib. He asked that, in an age where professional work and social interactions are tied to our phones, how can we encourage people to get off their phones? Kind of what we've already been discussing. So uh, any one of you? Yeah, uh, uh, so I mean, in this age, so many of our things are linked to technologies, to, our, to, to screen time. So it's a case-by-case -case scenario, right? right. I mean, um, if, if you feel that uh, there is work that needs to be done through your laptop or your phone, uh, we, we can do it, but what we are trying to give the message is that it should be controlled, it should be managed properly. It shouldn't be that we're spending so much time even working on our devices that it's taking away from our 
uh, family time or our relationships or our friends or our social connections and it's starting to impact us, our mental health. If our uh, usage of these devices is so much that it is making us anxious or depressed or all these things, then we, we should consider reducing that time uh, that is spent there. Uh, of course, it's, again, every person has to, have to, has to decide. There are some people who are by profession in the IT world right, right. or in those, you know, they have to sit on, on, in front of a screen. Um, uh, you know, they talk about the 2020 20 rule, right? Where you spend 20 minutes on your uh, device or in computer working, and then you take a break for 20 seconds uh, looking at something which is 20 meters away. Right. So it's a 20, 20, 20 rule uh, that I, if I recall this correctly, but the idea is that you should take breaks from what you're doing. And then again, when it's family time, when it's time to spend with your children, you should spend that time with your children. It shouldn't be that you're on the device and your children are getting neglected. So it's about management of our time on, on, on these devices, which is very important, and it's a case-by-case -case scenario. Perfect. Uh, another question is from Mahi Jamal Saiba. She asks that, Regarding reduced screen time, what should those people do who are lonely or are sick or don't have uh, any other options? Uh, Rizwan Saab, if you can answer this. So for them, you know, sometimes uh, technology, it helps us as well. There are some people who are introverts, very right. shy, and they can't really get out and, uh, you know, talk to people outside. So for those people, technology is a good outlet for them uh, for, you know, getting across people, talking to people, uh, and getting out of their comfort zone. But uh, even trying to tackle that issue of you know, being shy and not talking to people, I still think that through the help of maybe experts and maybe the family, their parents, uh, friends, they can uh, involve them to, in like social situations right. where they can get out of that and, and, and try to get those face-to-face -face interactions, which are, I think, more important than having all these social friends, friends online. We have thousands of friends, but in reality, they're not really friends. They're right. just, you know, they're just numbers that we see uh, in our apps, but they're not really there. And, and there's no denying, sorry, there's no denying the fact that the, the, the connection through uh, our devices is also helping some people. No doubt. Because they are so shy, as Rizwan Saab is, uh, is talking about. But again, management has to be there. If you know someone who is that kind of person, maybe you can help him uh, you know, deal with those uh, situations and, and develop his social skills if they're not there. Yeah. We're, what, we're, what we are saying is that it can lead towards extremes. Right. right. So, and, and for example, there's even um, some reports coming from uh, Japan where the extremes have gone to such an extreme that people, they, they refuse to even leave their homes anymore. They're just, they're stuck on their devices or, uh, and stuck inside the home. And in fact, they're opening a new industry where people are actually coming and their sole purpose is to have an interaction with these people who are refusing to leave their homes anymore. So this is the kind of extremes uh, that we're, we're, we're talking against here. Now, the last question, uh, we could take one more from social media. The question is that, do you think our devices can ever play a role in effective tarbiyat? So we talked about the tabligh aspect, but uh, they're asking the question about tarbiyat, that there is a lot of online material that can help. So should we use these things or should we stay away? In moderation, right? right. When it, even com when it comes to tabligh, it shouldn't be that we are spending so much time that it's becoming an extreme. In moderation, we can use the things that are available. Alislam.org is a massive website with so many uh, good books and so many features that can help us. So we can use that. I mean, you can use the, like we talked about the khutbah of uh, Huzur or other addresses. Even, you know, on the podcast, we have the addresses of Huzur, very good, high quality sound. We can use those to listen Listen to what Hazur is saying and, and, and conveying that message forward, and that is good for our tarbiyat. But it does not uh, outdo the actual tarbiyat, which uh, is there when we go to the Salat Center, when we physically go to the mosque, attend different programs, and pray and participate in the worship. That is the real tarbiyat. These devices are just there as secondary helpers when it comes to that. Jazakallah. I will take one last uh, comment, not question. This is from Mahmoud Anin Sahib. He says that Jazakumullah for the program. Phones and social media take majority of our time and it even affects people's adherence to prayer 
at the right time, and, and he's absolutely right about that. Right, we talked about this, right? Yes. I mean, if the phone is coming in the way, again, that we have to manage that. I mean, if it's coming in the way of our sleep, if it's coming in the way of our uh, uh, spiritual health, and it's impacting our spiritual health, we have to manage that, and we have to uh, properly take care of ourselves. Jazakallah. So mobile technology, it is, uh, as you've heard, it's very uh, playing an important uh, part in our lives. But an even more important part of our lives is our family, spending you know, time with the family, with our children, with our parents, with our siblings. It is much more important than spending time on the screen for pleasure. We should be searching for our pleasure in these social interactions. So there are a great number of advantages to mobile technology, but there are also, uh, as you've heard, these drawbacks. And any time there is a misbalance in our lives, that's when we start to really get into trouble. But Islam, it is the deen e wusta which teaches us to adopt the middle path, to do everything in moderation, to never go in the extremes. And that includes the usage of the screen time, especially in this era of growing mobile technology. Uh, Jazakallah, Farhan Saab and Rizwan Saab for joining us in this very interesting and insightful discussion. And thank you for tuning in and joining our discussion. Please do send us your feedback and comments at our Twitter handle, which is at beacon underscore MTA. You can also email us at beacon at mta.tv. Join us again same time next week at 1900 GMT on Beacon of Truth. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all. Islam kuch bhi ho Jayenge hum jahan bhi ke Jana pade hume Jayenge hum jahan bhi ke Jana pade hume